Welcome back to Taival Outdoors. My name is Joel, and boy, am I glad to be back on the trail. And we will be on this trail for the next six days or so. So it will be a bit of a longer trip, and what a place to begin it. Woo. Well, technically, we have already hiked for nine and a half kilometers before reaching this spot, but it is definitely the highlight of today. And a place where I have not been before. We are walking through southeastern Finland on a trail called E10, European Long Distance Path number 10. And I did a section of this from Ruokalahti up until Rautjärvi 10 years ago with a few friends of mine. And I'm not exactly sure where we ended up finishing our hike back then. We hiked for three days, but there's no GPS trail from that trip. But anyway, my thinking was that I'm sort of picking up where we left that trip 10 years ago, now continuing solo with the dog. What makes E10 sort of interesting and a different kind of a trail to follow compared to what I usually do, is that while at times this trail does go through this type of narrow, forest paths, but quite often E10 just follows these type of forest roads. And sometimes, I'm not sure yet how often, there are even these gravel roads. And these are regular car roads that we have to travel alongside. We are not in our pristine national parks this time, but just crossing through a section of real Finland, I guess. We are still spending the night under tarp, at least a couple of nights like that, and then maybe three nights or so in a lean-to shelter. So we're definitely still camping, spending outdoors the whole week. This part of the E10 trail is called Rajojen Reitti that I've been hiking now. We are here. There's actually next lean to. I was mistaken. I thought that this is the one that I'm going to spend the night, but actually it's this one, Suurvarpasen Laavu, is the one that I was planning on going. We have two choices here. And I believe, yeah, it says here E10, the official trail goes up there. So that's where we are going. Easy. Put a kibi. Falling rock. Huh. That's true. Better get moving then. It's not quite visible here, but it was quite a quite a hill to climb up and down to get here. It's half past six, and I don't really know how long the distance it is to the next lean to four kilometers, something like that. So yeah, 
I think it's better for us to stay here for tonight. It's a bit more of a distance than for tomorrow to walk, but at least tomorrow we can start early in the morning because today we got going like 20 to 2, so well in the afternoon. <laughs> this is our trail. There's still a bit of snow left. That's where we are going. Oh yeah, it says right there, four kilometers to the next lane too. But yeah, it's just four kilometers. Might as well stay here. So tomorrow, that way. But now, some rest. I think this was a good day all in all. A solid 19.6 kilometers. So not bad, not bad. Too bad I didn't catch it on camera, but Rocco went for an accidental swim. There is no beach whatsoever. It drops straight down, as it usually does on ponds like this. While I'm waiting for the water to boil, I already set up my sleep system, minus the sleeping pad that also goes inside the baby bag as usual. And uh, put on some warm clothes or a warm layer because last evening while packing, I noticed this. I've never been a fan of zippers that, you know, go both ways or like double zipper systems, you know what I mean. And now finally, this one failed and now there's this one zipper pull anymore that's keeping things together so not not great i've been looking for an excuse to get a new jacket uh something a bit different perhaps and maybe now it is time time to do that in case you missed it, I started working with Tactical Food Pack very recently. And as those of you who've been following my channel know, I've been enjoying their meals for several years now, as long as they've been available in Finland. But now, thanks to this cooperation, if you want to get some, then just check out the link in the description. There's also a discount code available for you all. And if you do, purchase anything through that link, it also helps the channel as well, so thanks in advance in case you want to try some. A few years ago, on my long UKK trail hike, I figured that it's absolutely great putting some cheese to your meal and then putting your water on top. And actually Tactical Food Pack makes freeze-dried Gouda and cheddar. And no rocka, not for you. And I didn't know this before I started looking looking into their current offering. And I think this is exactly what I have always kind of needed, but didn't know that such product exists. There we go. We're getting some cheese, fish, curry. Bit of fun. Exotic mix, I guess, but can't go wrong with cheese. So there's that. <sighs> Cheers. I took Rocca here as well. It's probably good to get him off the ground, especially now that he's wet after taking the dip there in the pond. So yeah, I think after eating this, we are probably ready to go to bed. Long day tomorrow. Quite a bit of roads tomorrow, at least towards the end. But in the morning, Looks like a lot of climbing again and uh, some forest trails that are actually not on the map. They are on this kind of marked GPX trail, but not on the map. So 
we'll, we'll have to see what that, that is all about. Mm. See you guys tomorrow. Good morning. I decided to go with Trangia burner because we have some extra kilometers to do today. So didn't want to spend any time with building and putting out the fire and so forth. So keeping it simple this morning so we can catch up to our plan, so to speak. First morning coffee in the woods on this trip. Mm. Hot, but strong enough. <laughs> I just checked my temperature meter that's hanging off of my rucksack and looks to be still around zero degrees. So indeed it can still get a bit chilly in the nights but looking at the sky completely blue skies no cloud coverage whatsoever so i'm betting that today it will actually get quite warm even hot i have sort of a plan where i'm going to go uh, but it's a not a campsite or lean-to or anything else b all based on just looking at the map. So Finland's every man's rights come into effect and hopefully I can find a good spot by a small lake. So that's the plan for today. Now some coffee, then filtering out that water, fill up the hydration bladder and off we go. Okay. Slippery. And there's the sun. I'm telling you, it's going to get warm today. First interesting site of the day, a historical border stone used at least since 1595 in the kingdoms of Sweden and Russia shared this area and this was then divided by these three stones and in fact I believe this is still today a border between three different regions in Finland. Since 1595 this has been a place of borders. Luckily now safely within Finnish borders and it's just a regional border stone but still whew, was a bit of a climb to get up here but now we have to get back down 
And actually we are very close to the lean to that we were supposed to go yesterday. So next up, let's go check it out. Suurvarpasen laavu. 4.3 kilometers and one hour and five minutes. So in that sense, I'm okay with the decision of staying there on the oop, previously into last night. A couple of tough kilometers ahead and then it gets easier. And then we'll go and see where we can find a good spot for lunch. Things you see on the trail. This had been here long enough that the trail markings are actually painted on. That's one hell of an anthill. There's anthill, there's rock. Anthill, rock. Jeez. <laughs> Lunch place finally achieved. It was roughly half past 11, a bit more when we got here. So actually we did eight kilometers in two hours as I kind of suspected. We are right now 12, 13 kilometers in of today's journey. Socks off, of course, drying them up here. Boiling some water, looks like we are having sweet potato curry, so we are continuing the curry theme. And some tortillas. Pretty cool spot. I will give you guys a tour. Rocco is chilling there in the shade. And that's the place, Soini Mankota. Not a bad spot, there's actually a secondary fire pit over there and plenty of firewood as well. No water source anywhere near, so that's something to keep in mind if you happen to come here. But, but I don't mind sitting down for a moment and enjoying the meal here in the shade, uh, where it's actually a bit cooler as well. I tried to get Rokka in here, but he prefers a, apparently to lay on the ground over there, so, you know. He can do what he wants. 
If that's what he wants, then so be it. <sighs> but definitely, definitely time for some lunch. Still a long day ahead of us, so let's put in some cheese as well as some garlic beef jerky to get the meat protein in and maybe some additional flavor as well. As I was packing away things, I remembered that I actually have some dessert. These are energy bars, which now is not yet the time for these, but I will go through them as well. These are all new products for me as well, so this is kind of testing these out. These freeze-dried gamma bars. Gamma bars. New Estonian word to remember by its amazing taste. Gamma. I have no idea what that is. Mmm. Okay. Like a cookie, basically. Not as sweet as Oreos or something like that, but... Mm. Flour, eggs, sugar, butter, salt. So, yeah, what's not to like? Mm. All right. It looks like I might have been wrong about that no water source thing. At least this sign says that there's a spring somewhere in that direction, but I did not see it in the map at least. So I must have missed it. And now we go through the spruce forest down to what I presume to be a gravel road. And then we will stick on it for quite a while, I think. Yeah, I think this is where my time on this Rajojen Reitti will end. It would continue that way, but we are taking this dirt road and then join the second trail for this trip. We are going to then follow until the end. Whew. The sun is really beating down. Making me doubt my decisions wearing this jacket. <laughs> Let's see. Let's see. That's interesting. Even though we are on a new trail, it's still marked with orange poles. Who had followed that would roughly translate to, I guess, holy trails or hallowed paths or something like that? The sun is pretty brutal, beating down hard. So maybe there's a bit more shade here. Final map change of today. Let's see how much we have still left. Quite a bit. Quite a bit. However, looks like we are just following roads or dirt roads, and then there's a bit bigger road, and I think. Yeah, it's the same big road that we are going to take tomorrow morning, so... I think once we hit that big road, we are just going to follow it and hopefully find a campsite. That's the plan.
So this is the little site that I fished out from the map. Not too bad. I think we can find a cute place for a tarp over here somewhere. First, I think we hydrate. Ooh. I think I will check over that side as well. There would be a nicer beach. I'm thinking about swimming. Oh, let's check out what we did today. Even with small shortcut in the end, 28.1 kilometers. So that should have been 24 kilometers, but we did the extra four. Now in the morning, 28.1. And I actually had to keep my jacket and hood on because of the sun. I realized I don't have any sunscreen. I usually do have some in here, but it's kit pack is not yet in summer mode. And I guess neither am I. So I had to keep the hood on to protect my ears and neck. Yeah, this looks promising. Very promising. Well, that was refreshing. Although it might look like summer, may I remind you that whole last week it still regularly dipped down below zero every single night. And as you may hear, it is quite windy. This spot is quite windy. And the shelter is facing towards the wind, which of course is a big no-no, but the wind isn't that strong and I would rather have these views. It is what it is. I think it won't be a bad idea now to make some surprisingly early dinner. It's coming half past four. Snacks then later on this evening. Just relax. Maybe also before I go to bed then we might do some fishing. Maybe we get some late night snacks for Rokka. Who knows? I think tomorrow will be a long day as well. In terms of kilometers at least. You're probably looking at something like something like today. And tomorrow will also be I would probably say 80% just roads. We have to go past Punkaharju and there really is only one way of doing that and that is by by roads. You will see what I mean then tomorrow. And then looks like tomorrow's campsite will be another lean to set up if we make it all the way where I planned. So yeah, a lot of walking, but if it's mostly roads, as it looks to be, it's probably also going to go by quite fast. For recovery after a long day of hiking, I cannot recommend this enough. Go barefooted. Of course, assuming that there is no snow on the ground or anything like that, but it has certainly helped me. Let the feet kind of breathe and of course dry from all the sweat and moisture and gets your toes moving and so forth. So I feel like it, it does a lot for me at least. But in terms of recovery, I think Rokka has already started by taking some pretty considerable naps and I have to say that the bed is looking quite fine right now. Not expecting any rain, so that's why all my stuff is kind of laying around. Socks are already dry. 
same with this t-shirt. So these all go on again tomorrow. I'm actually running just two t-shirts. That one for actual hiking. And then when I get to camp, I switch on a long sleeve, also merino wool t-shirt. And that's all I really need. All right, it is it. Uh, I don't even want to say what the time is, but <laughs> I could definitely, um, yeah, go go lay down. Let's say looks like that. Yeah. All right. I'll catch you guys then tomorrow. Well, I saw some action there on the lake and decided to give it a go and first cast this guy. I've been waiting when I will get something that is actually bigger than my rod. This was fairly close, but not good enough. Woman that up. Woman that Good morning to you too. Clearly much warmer morning than yesterday. I checked my meter and it looks like roughly plus five degrees. And of course the sun is already hitting the back of the tarp as well. Slept all right, except that some cranes started their mating ritual, singing stuff right over that ridge around 4 a.m. <laughs> and that was a bit much, but other than that, yeah, not bad. A little bit of cloud coverage today, so fingers crossed it won't be as hot of a day as it was yesterday. We'll see. I haven't had any blisters yet and I would like to keep it that way. But yesterday I noticed, especially walking on those roads, that I started to get a bit of a, a hot spot area, a lot of friction in here. So I figured I will put some tape on it for both feet. Now before we get going, I just checked and Rokka's paws are looking good, so nothing to worry over there. Coffee is almost done. So a little bit of tape and then boots on and enjoying the morning coffee and then breaking the camp. Indeed, I don't have sunscreen, but I remember that I always carry a bit of chapstick in my first aid kit that has SPF 30 protection. So a little bit of that Oop. on the nose, the ears, we're good to go. Saying goodbye to our little slice of paradise and hello to the endless gravel roads of Pyhätpolt. And here we go. We are getting closer to the town itself. Or actually a couple of small towns, I guess. And paved roads as well. A lot of this coming up today. Oh. 
looks like a good spot to take a small break. Rakka. We've been going now for almost two hours, so why not? Why not? Also a good opportunity to have some snacks and test a new product for me. Tactical Food Pack Energy Bar Multivitamin. Two bars and a lot of calories, but what's most exciting is, look at this expiration date. 18th of July, 2043. Alright, so we have two blocks like this. Bon appetit. Okay, so again, quite a like a um, slightly sweet cookie. It's mostly wheat flour, but then there is palm oil, sugar or sucrose, dextrose, milk powder, glucose syrup, water, salt, vitamin B2, B1, B6, A, D3, nicotin, niacin, raisin agent, para para para. So nothing fancy, but roughly 300 calories in just one of these. Mm. And of course those vitamins, which you rarely get from other camping food. I think I'm going to have half of this now and half of it later. Mm. So two bars in one bag. Yep. We have finally made it through, I guess, the town center of Punkaharju. Uh, yes, there is still some pavement, but I think the views are getting a bit better. And the wind, oh, this breeze feels very good. Very good indeed. Oh. That's a busy road, but at least, this one is a lot quieter. There are also sections like this, separated from the main road, so... At times we can definitely walk in peace. So it's a nice respite from the paved roads and all the cars that are just around that ridge line. The road is going way up there. We came down here in hopes that we can find a good spot for lunch break. I freaking knew it that there must be a bench or a table or something and lo and behold, indeed here was. I don't mind spending the next hour on this spot at all. Oh, yeah. It's a nice place. Metsä on Suomen tuki. Se on forest is the support of Finland or something like that. And we are back on the pavement. The long stretch of walking by the side of an asphalt road is about to end as we head on to a couple of smaller roads and the actual trails and then this day is done uh, we are not there yet we are definitely getting close it feels good to 
basically get away from the city and all the cars and all the people again. Talk about a difference. As you can tell by the orange sign, we are on the right trail. And there, there is no trail. <laughs> this is just the edge of a field. Now this is more like it. Luonto Polku. It means a nature trail. A good way to end today's hike. There's a big lake on the left. A smaller lake or maybe a large pond on the right. And this is the trail. Gotta say that after today's quite gruesome kilometers by the side of asphalt roads, this is such a treat. What a great trail. Or at least great trail section. We had bolot. All in all, has been quite strange so far. But right now, uh, I don't mind this at all. All right, so this was a bit unexpected. I knew that there was some type of a campfire site that was on the map, and that was kind of what I was going to check out at least. But there's like almost a lean-to shelter. I guess these are here in case you want to sleep on them, but of course with my foam pad they are not going to be super comfy. <laughs> I would actually rather sleep on the ground. Raka. And on a positive note, there's a trail there that I believe goes to Pyhät Polut. I had to take a bit of a detour to get here, because that trail is not on any maps. So um, yeah, that's great for tomorrow morning. However, there's a bit of distance still to the nearest lake to get some water. So I'm thinking that since we need water anyway, might as well go there and check it out. And we actually might set up our camp by the lake and not here. Welcome to our campsite number three. Pretty similar setup as to yesterday, but as they say in real estate business, location, location, location. Well, truth to be told, the place looks quite nice down there. As you can see, there's someone's boat, so this is basically just a place to put your boats on the water. But if we look around here, definitely. Uh, not a campsite in any shape or form. In fact, over that ridge, there's actually some type of gravel pit digging system going on, like big, massive pits. And we skirted around it and, and uh, yeah, once again, looking at the map and figuring out that, that there might be something interesting here. And indeed here was. It was a long day again, 29.8 kilometers, but it's not even five o'clock yet, so we have plenty of time to relax at the camp, make some dinner and just enjoy the views. And the primary wind direction is actually from the other side of the big ridge that we were just walking to get here. So this is quite sheltered all in all. And hopefully the trailhead that we saw there back at the um, campfire site, goes to Pyhät Polut. I, I have a hunch that it, it does. So yeah, that's where we will start tomorrow. And one more thing, tomorrow and the day after should both be shorter days than today and yesterday was. I'm guessing maybe around 20 kilometers or so per day. So almost one third less than what we did today. A grueling day on paved roads, but I think in the end the effort paid out. Although earlier today I did mention that it is nice to get away from all the people, I must still say that all of the folks that I talked with today, I think 
four people at least. All of them were really nice, really kind, really polite. And of course interested about the dog, about hearing where I'm going. And I think all of them knew about Pyhät Polut. Like they brought it up in the brief conversation we had, like before I did. Hey. So I guess it is well known over here, this whole trail system. Mm-mm. I think tomorrow morning we still have some nice nature trails to go for a while before hitting the road system again. We will reach Kerimäki tomorrow, then off to maybe one and a half kilometers on some type of a trail again, then on the roads all the way up until the lean to shelter that we are going. Yeah, it's always a bit difficult to say from these maps that what exactly is a trail, what exactly is a road. As you guys have seen now, what is sometimes marked as a kind of a narrow road or a dirt road can be nothing more than an old logging trail or something like that, old forest road. Sometimes they're too narrow even to handle up off-road vehicle, so there's plenty of that still to come in the upcoming three days and some bigger gravel or dirt roads I suppose as well before we reach our destination but tomorrow definitely still some nature trails coming up so that's that's great. That is great and I'm looking forward to seeing the next Lintu shelter locations because although we are kind of stuck walking a lot on roads you know again whatever you want to call a road but still in the end we do find these great lintu shelters these great camping sites and so forth so it's kind of kind of nice and interesting that you can find stuff like that at the end of a road Good morning, folks. Another great looking day coming up. Mm. It is already plus five, I guess, especially in the sun. But during the night, I had to pop one of these out. So this is your typical hand warmer and not something to eat. I guess as this campsite is, you know, a very low location, almost the same level as, as the lake, the cold air kind of rolled down, I guess, from the higher up and, and it was a bit cold during the night. So around two o'clock in the morning, I took one of these out. That's why I always carry this stuff in my kit bag, no matter if it's summer or not. Let's see if my hunch was right. This morning my wife sent me a screenshot of a local news page. There was an article saying that there's been sightings of one or two wolves on this exact area where I'm actually hiking right now. So, Kulennoinen Kerimäki Enonkoski. Good thing I have my own wolf alarm with me. Although I can only hope that 
Rokka's loyalties lie with me and not his distant cousins if we happen to encounter them. But, but as wolves tend to stay away from people, uh, I'm not too worried. I have actually fat biked here two years ago on this particular trail section. I remember thinking back then that this was indeed a great trail to ride on a fat bike. I didn't have Rokka with me back then. I think it was quite hot summer day or something and we hadn't practiced that much biking together, but definitely something to keep in mind if I happen to be on these parts of Finland with the dog and the bike again. Because this is quite a nice trail, at least when it comes to biking trails in Finland in general. This has been a long stretch of a road without any shade. Still some way to go before we get to turn left to smaller back roads again and hopefully into some shade. This is Kerimäki. That's where we are headed. But first, it's half past 11, so it's lunchtime. We've done already 14 kilometers and those went by relatively easy. Or at least quite fast. It was mostly gravel roads and such. And today is a shorter day in general, so we are, I guess, already beyond our halfway point of today, so that's quite nice. For lunch, looks like we are having rice and pork and cheddar cheese this time. Cheers. Mm. Not enough wind to justify the jacket anymore. Pirimän kirkko, the world's largest wooden church, I believe. That thing is massive. It's hard to do it any justice on GoPro, but safe to say it's the biggest wooden church I've ever seen. <laughs> Looks like this not a road section of Pyhät Polut after Kerimäki is just this. So this is kind of outdoor sports track trail. Basically during summer you can of course go jogging, walking, biking here and during winter There's then cross-country ski tracks on this trail. So this is what we are following as long as it goes until we hit an actual road. And then we are almost done for today. At the end of a road, less travel, there's another Lean to shelter for the very traveler. The pond is 
chest over there, you cannot see it from here, but not too bad. Ooh. Let's see, 23 kilometers of which I think it was two kilometers from the actual Pyhät Polo to make the trip to this certain location, so not too bad. It's only 15 past two in the afternoon, so we have plenty of time to spend at the camp and figure out if there's any firewood nearby. I'm running a bit short on my fuel, so I was planning on building at least one fire today and then one tomorrow at the next lean to. But if there is firewood, then breakfast is on the fire as well. But we'll have to see. Okay, so no luck with any type of firewood storage, but I did manage to find some firewood, which I think I can make. Yeah, I think I can make that work for two different small fires. So first of all, uh, a bit of birch bark, never hurt anyone. Then a couple of quite rotten pieces, some type of a plank. This was all in one pile, one decent piece. Then, good thing I brought my silky comboy with me. There was some of this stuff. I managed to saw into smaller pieces and then I just batoned it following the natural cracks in the wood using my knife. So I have now a small pile there. So I can definitely think that this will make me two small fires that I can boil some water with. Earlier I might have said that this is a pond, but I definitely meant that this is a bay. It's a bay to a very large lake in fact. Not a pond. Water for dinner, coffee, porridge, and of course, for the dog. Since for once I do have some birch bark, seems like a missed opportunity if I wouldn't use some fire steel. Found some half-burned leftover pieces by the fire, including this one, so making use of those now as well. Yeah, as I kind of expected, there's still plenty of firewood left over. Left over and I had that one bigger piece of kind of punk wood and I just threw it on top of the fire not expecting it to burn, but it produces a lot of smoke, which acts as a bit of a bug repellent. There's a lot of big spruce trees around, and of course we are close to water as well, so there's bound to be a bit of mosquitoes around, especially since it has been such a warm day. For dinner, cheddar, and some spaghetti and some garlic beef jerky. I guess some sort of roads is what I'm seeing for tomorrow. Once again, no idea how much of a road each line tries to represent. But Again, tomorrow, at the end of the day, there should be quite a nice place 
nice lean to waiting for us. So even though we had plenty of time today, surprisingly quickly it still flies past when you do all sorts of little camp chores and come pick some water and get stuff ready for tomorrow, look at maps and you know, stuff like that. Today was completely different from yesterday, that's for sure. Although we did have some roads again today, but still very hopeful, interesting to see what and we will have tomorrow. What kind of destination waits for us then? Maybe that's it for today. I'll catch up with you all with my morning coffee again. Good morning. Look who decided to join me in the lean to. Looks like we have a bit of a unfortunate news first thing in the morning. I updated the current forest fire warnings and indeed this region is now under a warning, a grass fire warning to be exact. And that means that no more open fires. So there goes that idea of saving some fuel. Well, the only thing that I can think of right now first in the morning is that I will probably have to not boil anything anymore or at least maybe not this breakfast uh, I will just have to pump filter the water and then heat it up but not waste fuel to get it boiling if that makes sense because I've been now boiling all my breakfast water and dinner water so basically when I'm at the camp I've been taking the water straight from whatever water source and boiled it and, and I've been good to go but so yeah at least for this breakfast and then lunch, no boiling water. Now that we are starting our fifth day of hiking, you can imagine that there's a lot less food now in Rokka's backpack. So there's a lot of empty space within. And these side pouches actually do have quite a fancy feature that I've been now using. I wanted to quickly show you guys as well. There's this G hook that was originally up here, but every day as the contents have been <laughs> eaten, I've kind of folded up this bag like so. And I think we can put this now today all the way to the final loop. There you have it. Much slimmer pouch for today. So there's less, less of a bounce, I guess, and, and so forth. Less of a chance of it catching any, any branches or undergrowth or so forth. So quite a handy thing. There will be a full review of this Sacre dog harness and, and backpack system sometime after this trip. There are some great things such as this and some things that I think should still be improved. But all in all, been quite happy with this, especially with this waterproof side pouches. There's firewood at least now ready for the next person who comes in. Cheers. Good looking day. But I bet it's going to be again another warm one. I think this is new. I don't think there were any green on birch trees when we started. We are on a bigger road, once again waiting to turn left in the smaller back roads and hopefully into shade as well. 
Looks like we have a countdown. 27 kilometers until Enon Koski, I presume. I'm not sure how I feel about that. It's kind of nice to keep track of your progress, I guess. But 27 starts to be so temptingly close that, uh, yeah, something that I could definitely do in one day, but I won't. Uh, it's a big radio and TV mast. And funnily enough, marked with orange, just like our trail markers. So you can actually see this from quite far away and know that you are going to the right direction. <laughs> the most, I guess, depressing part of where I followed has not been going through a couple of towns. Those have been fine. But it's this. Since I think a lot of these roads that we walk are basically just for logging, it means we have to go either through or right by side of these areas that are absolutely clear cut and sometimes look very desolate. And if you look over there, it's the perfect type of forest to walk through. Easy going but still in the woods. So I kind of hope that maybe this trail could be altered in some places to go through there rather than through places like this. Hmm. Hmm. I haven't checked how far we've come, but that looks like a campfire site to me. So let's see if it's not too far away. Oh yeah, I think I can see it. I think this is as good place for a lunch as any. Again, something that was not marked on maps. Hmm. All right, here we are. Some information. It's actually made for Pyhät Palut Association by uh, outdoor guide students in 2020. And there's some basic etiquette and kind of a rules and stuff like that. Coordinates and plenty of great little firewood, which of course we cannot use right now, but as far as campfire sites go, this is quite funny looking. Let's see, I guess there's also a guest book here. Yep. All right. I'll take it. Had to put the jacket on just to get some more protection from the sun. As you can probably tell, there isn't much, much of a shaded spot around here. In fact, there is only one and that's behind that firewood shed over there and Rokka is taking that spot. My legs have been feeling quite fresh today, probably due to the fact that yesterday was a bit shorter day and we had plenty of time to rest and recuperate at the camp. And that, that clearly, clearly shows. Mm. Not a cloud in sight. Oh, was not expecting this. Eighteen kilometers left, and assuming it is roughly fifteen kilometers we have to do tomorrow, then we are closing in on today's campsite. As you have seen, I haven't filmed that much. It's been mostly the same old, same old, and I will give my thoughts about both of these trail. Rajoen Reitti, 
and we had pollute tomorrow. Um, because even though there has been quite a bit of walking on just who knows what kind of roads during Pyhat Polut, it has still uh, some highlights. It has still some things going on for it. I know that there will be a lot of dislikes and people generally not appreciating <laughs> this video and this type of hike. Uh, but for me, this has been a nice way of experiencing a slice of Finland, I guess. There is an orange signpost. The road is heading deeper into the woods now. Looking good. Joi joi. Hyvä rokka, hienosti menee. Uh, uh, uh. Holy moly, holy trails. You do not disappoint. This is a big one. And a loud one. Alright, so today's number is 19.3. That's the amount of kilometers done today, so an easy day for sure. And I actually did go past the um, 15 kilometer marker, the mark post. So I guess it's a bit less than 15 tomorrow, but still something like that. First impressions of Polvikoski Lean to Shelter is that it's an interesting design. Mm, not necessarily for me, this kind of secondary bench system, because then the roof is very close by, and I already hit my head once. Plenty of firewood, there's even a small hatchet over there, coffee pots, so called, even a knife. So well stocked, all in all. However, I just don't understand, why do people build these shelters in these small spruce tree areas like this? And that has been the case for all of these lean-to shelters on this trip. And the problem with that is when you have water, big spruce trees, meaning there's plenty of shade as well, there's bound to be a lot of mosquitoes. That's just the way it is. So I don't, I don't understand. Luckily, there's at least a bit of a breeze, not much, but a bit. So it helps at least for now. But I bet once the evening comes, the little bastards come with it. Oh, oh. Yeah, plenty of time again to rest and enjoy these views, I guess. Rokka has already taken a head start in that. I wonder where that trail leads to. Or this one. Or this one. None of these are on many maps that I have. This is quite strange, considering how clearly you can see these things. Nice place, but apparently not often visited. I did check the guest book and last month, so in April, I think I counted, was it six entries? And for this month, just one. Now before me, that was a couple of days ago, so understandable. 
uh, I think you can drive quite close by, but it's still not well known. There's not a lot of information about this place online. And it is kind of in the middle of nowhere, regardless. So. I have a bench and a table like a civilized person. It's kind of funny, actually. It feels weird. Smells exactly like tuna pasta. Cheers. Tastes like tuna pasta too. Not something you often have outdoors, or at least I don't. Woku decided to wake up just as I started to eat. How surprising. One thing that I like to do when spending time at the camp is to read something and as mentioned in my first aid kit video, I do always carry this field guide to wilderness and rescue medicine and it's a pretty, pretty, pretty extensive guide, 103 pages, but it's good to remind myself every now and then kind of how the basics go and what to look out for and so forth. And I don't know, it's just useful in this setting and something that you don't really necessarily do otherwise on your free time. But one thing that I do not have too much to spare is memory card space and that GoPro. So I think that's it for today and we will catch with you all then tomorrow on the breakfast. So see you guys later. Good morning, folks. I'm happy to tell that I slept really well. It's probably that nature's own white noise and this super thick double mattress system that I had that made the difference, I guess. It's the final countdown. You're welcome. Now the song is stuck in your head as well. Whew. It is getting warm early today. Damn. I think there's a lean-to shelter over there. Let's go check it out. not on the map, so I want to see if what's the deal with this place. Not much of a platform to sleep on, but damn, those are some nice views.
I will mark this place on my map for future reference. Because this, yeah, this is not on the map. We are back on uncharted territory. The last time on this trip. And what I mean by uncharted is that you can of course download the GPX file for Brad Bolt. And it will go through exactly here. However, if you look at the official Finnish topographic terrain maps, there is no trail here. There's absolutely nothing marked on those maps. So you kind of don't know what to expect. Well, to be honest, there is barely a trail here, so no wonder it's not visible on the maps. But as you can see, plenty of orange signposts. So you cannot exactly get lost this, on this section. Now that we are back on the map, I could give you guys the route summary that I promised. Starting with Rajojen Reitti. So, first of all, it's definitely part of the European Long Distance Path E10. And if you do find good maps, you can actually start that path on the uh, southern coast of Finland by the Baltic Sea to work your way up north or northeast. Trail is well marked. If I would have to guess, all of those new signposts and whatnot have been installed in the past three years or so. They look to be in very good condition. Um, the trail itself at times follows different type of roads, as you saw, but at other times goes on up and down these very steep hills. And at some points, those climbs and descents can be very technical, narrow and sketchy trails. And in fact, just before I reached the uh, lean-to where we spent the first night, I had to go on all fours at one point to get on top of that hill. So yeah, definitely not easy. And uh, Hiking poles are recommended to get, get through those climbs. So that is definitely a solid outdoor backpacking trail. Plenty of lean-to shelters as well. So you can do just as short or long days as you want. And of course, Haukkavuori is on the way, which is a quite nice place to visit. When it comes to Pyhät Polut, uh, it, it's a bit different story. In fact, I would almost venture and say that Pyhät Polut as a whole is a better trail to do on, let's say, a gravel bike, like bikepacking adventure, or even a fat bike. Um, only the couple of sections here and there, which are not marked on maps, which means they are um, a bit sketchier trails. Those might be a bit too difficult uh, for gravel bikes at least. So there's a bit of a hike a bike there in places, but mostly I would say this would make quite a fine bikepacking trip. Maybe over the course of three days or so. 
Um, although it does follow roads, you still need a map. So you print your own and mark the trail and use those maps because I've been showing you guys the orange kind of markers here and there, but at some points on kind of crucial crossroads and things like that, there are no markers. So you really need to look at the map and be aware of where you are and not just blindly following these roads because there are endless kilometers of these type of roads in Finland. So <laughs> you need to be aware of where you are, even when you are mostly following them. But definitely a different type of a hike for me, that is for certain. And mostly in places where I've never been before, so that is always a big bonus in my books. But one more thing to note regarding both trails is that in, I think I counted maybe three or four places during my short time on Rajo and Reiti, the trail on the ground didn't go uh, exactly where uh, the trail on the map went. So I had downloaded the GPX trail and overlaid it on the map and there were a couple of slight differences, not big one, but just something to be aware of. And I think in a couple of places during the early parts of Pyhät Follows, it was the same situation, but mostly everything is exactly like you find online on those GPX files. I will try to include some links in the description for both of these trails if you want to check them out, and please do. And this is it. There's one orange post right over there by the bridge. I think we've done the whole Buhat Polot. Kolovesi National Park that way on my to do list, but for now. This is what I will more than happily settle to. Who had followed? I think we've done it. I think we have done it. Here's the bridge. And this is of course the old bridge of Enokoski. 13.8 kilometers today. So a bit shy of that 15 what I thought it would be. In total, I don't know, I haven't counted, probably close to 130. I will show now the map and the whole trail and everything. But in the end, that is not super important. I'm grateful we got to do this little hike. Good way to kickstart this summer. If you've been watching Tidal Outdoors, let me know if you stayed with us all the way until the end of the video. That's much appreciated. My name is Joel. This is, of course, Rokka, waiting to get a drink from that stream. And we both will see you all in the next one.